like styles make fights, right? And this is a major, it's just it, it's a major style clash in terms of how they want to attack on offense and also on defense. And I, I'm just I'm excited about this. Like this is going to be a really interesting chess match. You got two two coaching staffs that rarely, if ever, lose. DeBoer is like 114 and 11 in his career. Mm-hmm. That's nuts. And Harbaugh just outcoached Nick Saban. So this is this is a fun like what Tom, what do you think really snap call? Like what, what does this come down to for you? We talked about Michigan was able to kind of shut down Alabama's receivers in this game. They weren't afraid of them. They didn't they didn't really respect them. They were just like, yeah, okay, let's see what you can do. They can't they can't play Washington the same way. Like that is the one thing about this Washington team. It's you know, I, I picked against it in both games against Oregon. I picked against it tonight in Texas because I look at things on paper and I say, well, this is the more complete team. But, like, the difference is Michael Paddock's and three NFL receivers. Can you stop that? Because, like, they're going to score points. So you can't just get into a kind of slugfest with them and think you're going to win. You're going to have to come in with a game plan of we got to try to score third. Because I think – like Washington will have a much better chance of putting up points on Michigan than Alabama did. Because like you said, Alabama did not respect Alabama or Michigan did not respect Alabama's passing game. It has to respect Washington's, but Dylan Johnson gets injured at the end of the game tonight. Is he going to be healthy going forward? Um, Muhammad, their corner got hurt going diving in that last one of the last plays and he landed on his shoulder and it looked like that thing came out. I don't know if he's going to be available. That could be a problem for Did he come back in. Did he? I'm I'm not sure because I I was trying to watch the last couple of plays. You know, I was too I, busy I, watching oh. Chip watching the game. It was kind of weird, but that was awesome. <laughs> Chip ten seconds ahead of the rest of us, knowing everything that's happening. But like, so that is going to be interesting to me. But I also think the other thing that has to happen is Texas, as we talked about it, their offensive line struggled with Washington's defensive line. Michigan was able to block Alabama. If they can block Alabama, I feel like they're going to be able to block Washington, but I don't know that we could see there. Can Washington block Michigan? It's going to be the, the it's going to be a really really interesting matchup because they are two different teams philosophically and they have like different approaches. Washington's obviously moving quicker. M- Michigan is much more inclined to go slow and just make things, you know, a Big 10 football game. So it's it's going to be to it's going to come down to which team can dictate the way it plays. Like that's really what it's going to come down to. And also, can you know Michigan not screw up every special team snap, or can Washington not screw up special team snaps? Because Washington muffed a punt tonight. Washington committed a kick catch interference tonight. I don't know. It's going to be a great Big Ten game. I can't wait to watch it. I think it comes. I mean, we just saw Michigan get after Jalen Milrow six times. He was clearly uncomfortable, but. The Alabama's offensive line was a problem all year. Washington, it is the strength. So it is one of the best strength versus strength matchups I think we might see all entire the, the entire season. I think if you're Michigan, you really got to pick your spots when you try to when you want to try to bring pressure because you know, I you I think you were worried about one receiver really hurting you in Jermaine Burton for Alabama. And yeah, they have some good pieces, but they're not going to hurt you as bad as three dudes that can all put you in a very serious bind if you have a corner on an island with any one of them. So can they, you know, they're going to pick their point, pick their spots to bring some pressures. And then can they get after them with four, you know, can they get after them with five? And that to me is, that's the one thing we really haven't seen because any quarterback, no matter how good they are, if you can get pressure, if you have him running for his life, can Michigan do that? You know, I, I do think Washington has just been overlooked all season long They've answered every single time. I think they're. I think they're physical. You know. I think they're p- portrayed as, and it's because their defense isn't real good statistically. They put up a bunch of points, so I think there's this perception that oh, they must be a finesse team. But they match physicality with Oregon. They matched it with Texas. Like they're not. They're not timid. So I don't think they're going to be intimidated by Michigan. And they're, another they're thing physical. too. No, sorry. Another thing but, is like you talked about, they got six or whatever sacks on Jalen Miller tonight. Nobody can sack Michael Penix. Right. So like, can Michigan, like, even if Michigan gets that pressure, can they bring Penix down? Because nobody to this point has really been able to do it. He just kind of like, he's standing here and then somehow he's over here. 
and he gets he's away got from a quick the pressure. Release. Yeah. He can fling it. He just yeah, flicks he, it. Well, he's got the Bugs Bunny pitcher wind up, but the release is really quick once he gets it going. So it's it is going to be fascinating. I can't wait to watch this game. And also, I mean, Alabama fans will take this as anti SEC hate. So we'll all. I'm just happy that we're going to have a first time champion in the playoff era, no matter what. That is the yeah. that's like for me with Alabama losing the game. That was the one thing is like we're going to have a new champion. This is this is something that doesn't typically happen. It's always one of these two or three teams, but we're going to have a first time champ. And I think that adds a layer of excitement to this game, which kind of adds to why we really don't know what to expect, because one of these teams is supposed to be getting the hell beat out of it by an SEC team next week. That's how it usually goes. I think they're going to have to have Penix play another just incredible game, right? Like that seems obvious. You, you, you need your studs to be studs. It did feel like Texas got close tonight. Like they did get pressure on him. And there were a couple plays that he made that he deserves credit for making. But like Texas was kind of Nat's ass away from getting him, man. And, you know, we'll see if Michigan can do that. Michigan is a little bit better off the edge. Texas mm-hmm. does not have great edge rushers. I also think Michigan in the secondary is probably a good bit better than Texas, but definitely a little bit better, like like at, at, at minimum. But we don't really know what's the best passing attack they've faced. Ohio State, right? Which we didn't love the quarterback this year. Obviously, the receivers we do love uh, quite a bit. So how well can they simulate that in practice, right? I don't know. Uh, I thought they could simulate Bama in practice pretty well. It's Smash Mouth. They have Alex Orgy, who's actually a pr- like they were uniquely yeah. prepped to have a mm-hmm. good approximation of Milrow in Orgy. Like, not a good thrower, not a good thrower. Huge, fast, good runner. Okay, yeah, we 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 can have you for for scout team purposes. You know, pretty good. I I'm curious to see what kind of edge pressure Michigan can get, and can you make Penix hold the ball? I, like, I think Washington is physical, but I think the way they get like they knock you down is that you're flat footed, right? Because you're not really sure what they're going to do. They give you so many different looks. You're not you're not really attacking and dictating. Like it felt like Texas never dictated defensively. You know, can Michigan find a way to dictate and make Washington uncomfortable? I, when Washington's on, nobody really does it to them. We've no. seen their their floor, but like their ceiling also increasingly looks awesome every single week. I, Texas did move Washington with the run game. So if I'm Michigan. I am kind of licking my chops at that. I'm like, all right, I think there's something to be had here. Uh, so definitely yeah. a slower paced game without how the like Washington and, and you're clock. keeping so the Michigan. ball. Like when you're a tempo team like Washington is, you want possessions, you want to be on the field. You're sitting over there feeling hopeless on the sideline if Michigan's running the ball. I'm with you, bud. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh I don't you see know, the line not, at minus five right now. Is it? Yeah. About I think right, it opened think. at four and it went up to five. Be like, well, you mentioned the Michigan run game. Like, I'm wondering if Donovan Edwards will show up because <laughs> Donovan Edwards was mostly anonymous and invisible in the game tonight. He only had what? Let me see here 11 yards on four carries. And like, what's been really good about Michigan's rushing attack all year is that they have Corum and Edwards and they kind of go between them and they're able to, you know, that's how they've been able to kind of build and sustain that pressure on opponents is that they'll they'll wear you down with Corum for a little bit then they go rest him and they bring in Edwards they didn't have that tonight I think that kind of stunted what they were trying to do offensively particularly in the third quarter 